Honey, I shrunk the host? We're inside a PC right now. Do you know what all this stuff is? And who invented these components and what makes it all work? If you want to find out, play along with us on the Computer Bowl. It's a battle of wits on computer trivia. The Virtual Bowl on the special edition of the Computer Chronicles. To find out more about this and other PC TV programs, join our Computers on Television forum. Go PC TV, only on CompuServe. Hi, I'm Stuart Chaffee. Welcome to the 1995 Computer Bowl presented by the Computer Museum of Boston. I'm here at the Computer Museum right now in their new Networked Planet exhibit, and this is one spectacular example of a network. Thanks to fiber optic lines, which are connecting hundreds of computers scattered all over the country, we can see on this one electronic display a representation of every single airplane currently flying over the United States at this particular moment. Now, for this year's Computer Bowl, we have participants scattered all over the country for the first ever virtual bowl, using network technology to bring you a spectacular first time ever television event, the Computer Bowl, the Net Generation. So on with the virtual bowl as we hand off to the next location somewhere out there in cyberspace. Okay, Nicholas will keep the questions and I'll keep score. Let's begin. Okay, Chris, the first one really defines the concept of trivia. Um, <clears throat> according to the New York Times, how many parking spaces are there in the garage at Bill Gates' new home? <laughs> ah, Catherine Clark, East Coast. Twelve. Oh, sorry, that's close, it's 20. <laughs> okay, here's some more real trivia. Uh, if you fly between Silicon Valley and Boston, you probably know that there's only one, or actually two nonstop flights each day from Boston to San Jose or vice versa. They're both American airline flights. Can you give us either of the two flight numbers? Joseph Alsop, East Coast. American 129. That's absolutely correct. Yes! <laughs> And we should, we should say, before we do the next one, that we have Stuart Chiffe at the Computer Museum now with a special question. The Computer Museum has lots of famous communications devices on display here. I'm holding one of them behind my back right now. I'll show it to you in just a second. It was built in the early 1970s by a famous personal computer pioneer, but it got him into a lot of trouble. The question is, what is the device and who built it? And here it is. Blank, West Coast. Um, it's a blue box, and it was Steve Jobs. Was uh, was me. That's oh. not correct. No, uh, so we're going to ask the uh, East Coast, Catherine Clark. It's a blue box by Wozniak. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, listening carefully. And last year's blockbuster movie, Forrest Gump. The title character invests in a computer company. Carl Ledbetter, East Coast. Apple. That is correct. Yes. Yes. Jumped in early and guessed correctly. Yes. So the East Coast qualifies for this bonus round. Listen carefully now, East Coast. This bonus round deals with the latest book titles in today's computing field. Clifford Stoll is the well-known author of The Cuckoo's Egg. He has just written a new book that takes aim at the information superhighway. What is it called? You can consult. Silicon snake oil. That's. Uh, well, it's not quite right, judges. Will we uh, award that one or not? No. No, uh, not quite. No, you left out Valley. Silicon Valley snake oil. Sorry. So close. Uh, they're doing even better. Okay, part two of the bonus round. There's a new book about cognitive science called Fluid Concepts and Creative Analogies. Who wrote that book? Okay, do we have an answer from the captain? Nick Negroponte. Oh, no, sorry, it's Douglas Hofstadter. Okay, the third and final part of the bonus round. According to Publishers Weekly, what general computing title is the current top seller today? Is it How Computers Work, The Internet Navigator, or Internet Yellow Pages? How Computers Work, The Internet Navigator, or Internet Yellow Pages. What is your answer? Internet Navigator. 
I'm sorry, no, it's the Internet Yellow Pages. What do the initials WWW stand for? Andy Hertzfeld, West Coast. World Wide Web. World uh, Wide Web. No. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I believe you interrupted, so we're going to give the other side a chance to answer. And what? Uh, let me repeat the question. Yeah, we'll let right. you repeat the question okay, for them. because uh, Andy blew it by not listening to the whole question. Uh, <laughs> what do the initials WWW stand for on the Internet? Paul Gillen, East Coast. World Wide Web Worm. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Okay, that's the end of the first round, and the score is 60 to 10 in favor of the East Coast. Okay, now once again, here's Stuart Chiffey at the Computer Museum. This huge computer with all the flashing lights over here is the famous Whirlwind computer. It was built in 1951. The Whirlwind is famous for lots of computing firsts, but one unique part of its history is the Whirlwind was the first computer ever to be interviewed live on television. The question is, what is the name of the newsman who interviewed the Whirlwind? A Steve Blank, West Coast. Edward R. Murrow. Edward R. Murrow is correct. Okay, now we have a bonus round coming up, and here's your qualifying question, Nicholas. Peter Norton is known for pioneering the PC utility business. Today, he does what? One, collect art. Two, climb mountains. Three, perform in a circus. Andy Hertzfeldt, West Coast. Collect, collect art. That's correct. Okay, so the, the West Coast qualifies for this bonus round. This bonus round is a potpourri of three unrelated questions. Number one. What book by John Updike features a college professor who contemplates writing a computer program to prove the existence of God? What book by John Updike features a college professor who contemplates writing a computer program to prove the existence of God? This is a tough one. Do we have an answer? Watership Down. No, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he may have been as surprised by that as uh, he were. <laughs> uh, the answer is Roger's version. Okay, part two of your bonus round now. In the 1970 movie Colossus, The Forbin Project, what Northern California site was used for the filming? Was it the Exploratorium, the Lawrence Hall of Science, or the San Rafael Civic Center? Science. What's uh, the answer is Lawrence Hall of Science. That is correct. Yay! So 10 points. Okay, number three in the bonus round. <laughs> in 1960, CBS used an IBM 7090 computer to predict the outcome of the presidential race. Was the computer correct? No. No, that is correct. The computer predicted that Nixon would win. Okay, Nicholas, our next question, please. Right, the next one's not like the roulette table. It's not 50-50. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> what interactive CD-ROM from Jap Japan takes you on a train ride through a mysterious world of... Steve Blank, West Coast. Gadget. Gadget is correct for 10 points. We'd we'll, we'll like to get a scoring update now to see how our two teams are faring. So let's find out what we've got for a total score. 90, 60 in favor of the East Coast. Nicholas. Okay. What famous computer personality's email address was printed in the New Yorker in 1994? Paul Gillen, East Coast. Bill Gates. Bill Gates is correct for 10 points. We've played two rounds so far, and now, panelists, if you're ready, Nicholas, would you give us our next question, please? Okay. It's a long one. Four well-known computer personalities, David Packard, Gordon Moore, Paul Allen, and Mitch Kapoor, recently pledged a total of over $4 million to a nonprofit organization, unfortunately not the Media Lab, called SETI. What is the purpose of this organization? Andy Hertzfeld, West Coast. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Absolutely correct. Very good. Ten points. Okay, next. According to a spoof news release last year, what famous institution was Microsoft rumored to be purchasing? Paul Gillen, East Coast. The Catholic Church. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, we're moving right along.
And now, Stuart Chiffé has another question for us. This is a computer built out of more than 10,000 Tinker Toy parts. It was built in the late 1970s by Danny Hillis and Brian Silverman of Thinking Machines Corporation. This Tinker Toy computer was designed to perform one specific task. The question is, what was the computer built to do? Paul Gill on the East Coast. Tic-tac-toe. I, I went too soon. Play tic-tac-toe is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Back to me? We're back to you, Nicholas. Okay, yes. well, one of our judges can really judge this one for sure. How much did Hewlett Packard pay for Apollo in 1989? Four million, sorry, 476 million. I was actually going to let you guess. Paul Gill and East Coast. 476 million. That is correct for 10 points. Panelists, we have a bonus round coming up. Nicholas will read your qualifying question. And listen carefully. Okay. What is the Library of Congress two-letter prefix for books dealing with computer science? Is it QE, CS, or FR? John Landry, East Coast. CS. Uh, what was the answer again, please? CS. CS is incorrect. I'm sorry. The correct answer is QE. So we will go to another qualifying question for the bonus round. Nicholas? Okay. What is the code name for Apple's System 8? Steve Blank, West Coast. Copeland. Copeland is correct for 10 points and you qualify for the bonus round, West Coast. All right, listen carefully. This three-part bonus round deals with computer statistics. Part one. For 10 points, according to the 1994-95 Computer Industry Almanac, what is the installed base of mainframe and supercomputers in the world today? That's the total combination. Is it 50,000, 500,000, or 5 million? What is the total number of mainframe and supercomputers in the world today? Is it 50,000, 500,000, or 5 million? 50,000. 50,000 is correct. Actually, 52,000. 10 points, very good. All right, part two. What is the installed base of mini computers in the world? Is it 600,000, 6 million, or 60 million? How many mini computers in the world? 600,000, 6 million, or 60 million? I would say 600,000. And we have 600, your answer. 600,000. Uh, 600,000 is not correct, it is 6 million. Let's try part three now of this bonus round. What percent of the world's computers are in the United States? Is it 43%, 63%, or 83%? What percent of the world's computers are in the United States? 43%, 63%, or 83%? 63%? I'm sorry, no, it's 43%. But you did get one out of the three correct. So That's why multiple the score is 130 <laughs> to 120, and that's in favor of the East Coast, I believe. That is correct. So they're hanging on by a very slim margin. Nicholas, on to our regular questions. Okay, it's tight, folks. <clears throat> of the top 10 memory chip makers in 1994, only two were U.S. companies. One was Texas Instruments. Who was the other? C Blank, West Coast. Uh, Micron. Micron is correct for 10 points. In what year did Digital Equipment Corporation ship the first PDP-8 minicomputer? 1965, 66, or 67? Catherine Clark, East Coast. 65. 65 is correct for 10 points. Very good. I noticed Gordon was in the audience at the West Coast, so he can confirm that. <laughs> Okay, this is a long one, folks. The Annie Awards, A-N-N-I-E, awards, are given each year for the best animated commercials. In 1994, the animated award for the first time to a went for the first time to a computer-generated animated commercial for which company, for a product, you, you have to decide which company. Dow Chemical, Nike Shoes, or Coca-Cola? Andy Hertzfeld, West Coast. Coca-Cola. Co Coca Coca-Cola, yes, Coca -Cola. for their animated polar bears. Very good. Okay, we're going to end the round now with the East 140 and the West 140. It's all even. 
To find out more about this and other PCTV programs, join our Computers on Television forum. Go PCTV, only on CompuServe. Okay, it's time for the fourth and final round of the Computer Bowl. Uh, let's begin. Nicholas, right, would you start go. us off? Okay, Ray Tomlinson may not be a household name, but he invented something that most computers know well. Which did he invent of the following? The at sign for email addresses, the hole in the middle of CD-ROMs, or the blinking cursor? Paul Gill on the East Coast. The blinking cursor. No, I'm sorry, it's the at sign. It's the hole in, in the, the middle email. of CD-ROMs. No, the hole in the middle. Well, uh, we, we couldn't stop you with a hole in the middle of the CD-ROM. That's OK. Nicholas, it's next. It's the at sign. <laughs> yeah. OK. What brand of computer was used to create the special effects for the movie, for the three movies, Forrest Gump, The Mask, and The Flintstones? Steve Blank, West Coast. Uh, Silicon Graphics. Silicon Graphics is absolutely correct. Ten points. It's unfair. It was written for Steve. <laughs> OK. Two as yet unreleased software packages are codenamed after locations on Interstate 57. What are the cities and software packages? Joe Ossoff, East Coast. Cairo and Chicago. Yes, and the products, please. Uh, Windows NT and Windows 95. Judges, will we give that? Uh, yeah. Yes, we'll give that. Yeah, that's yes. close enough. Yes, it's Windows NT 4.0, but uh, <laughs> I think incredible. that's fairly implicit. That's, uh, that's very yeah, good. It's and it's, it's K-Roll when you're out there, by the way. We want to make that perfectly clear. Uh, <laughs> Pay attention, this is, a, this is a very long one, okay? Who said the following, and this is the quote. The basic idea of associate, associative indexing is a provision whereby any item may be caused at will to select immediately and automatically another. Wholly new forms and encyclopedias will appear ready-made with a mesh of associative trails running through them, ready <laughs> blank west coast. Vannevar Bush. Very good, it's Vannevar Bush. That's a quote from his seminal paper, as we may know, in the Atlantic Monthly in 1945, where he essentially uh, talked about the concept of hypertext. Nicholas, oh, before, let me get a score update, because I heard, this, heard it in my ear. It didn't quite get. It's 150 for the East and 170 for the West. Okay, Nicholas. So, the dark horse is pulled ahead here. At the first West Coast computer fair during the 1970s, Apple's co-founder, Steve Wozniak, played a prank by printing and distributing 20,000 leaflets for a non-existent computer. Did he call it the... Andy Hertzfeld, West Coast. The Zaltair. <laughs> That's correct, the Zaltair. Very good. You should know, Andy. And it's your last chance to get some more points all at once. Here's your qualifying question. Nicholas. Okay, this coming February, the computer industry will celebrate the fifth anniversary of what famous 50, early... 50, sorry, yeah. I yeah. am very sorry. Well, I announced I was dyslexic <laughs> in my book, so... Paul Dillon, East the Coast. The 50th. The Mark One. I'm sorry, that's no. incorrect, and you interrupted us, so we'll repeat the entire question see for if the I can, other side. Let's see if I can read it right this time for the other side. This coming February, the computer industry will celebrate the 50th anniversary of what famous early computer? Does anyone want to take a shot? Okay, Steve Blank, West Coast. ENIAC. ENIAC is correct. Okay. So you qualify for the bonus round. This bonus round is all about code names for software. Listen carefully. The questions are courtesy of Michael Hyman author of the upcoming book, PC Roadkill. There's a great title for you. Uh, number one, for 10 points, which of the following is not a theme used for code names of OS2 releases? Mercedes numbers, boat types, or baseball team names? Which is not a theme used for code names of OS2 releases? Mercedes numbers, boat types, or baseball team names? May we have your answer, please? Baseball team names. That's correct. Baseball team names are not used. Ten points. All right, part two. What was the code name for the Apple III? Yeah, you heard, uh, well, no, we just, uh, uh, we're still in a bonus round here, so we're going to be talking to the team captain. 
What Sarah. was the... Sarah is correct. All right. For 10 points. Part three, last part of the bonus round. What were Go Corporation's code names for pen point? There are two. What were Go Corporation's code names for pen point? I need an answer. Yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, Lumber time eight. is up. Okay. The answer is Amstel and Rolling Rock. Okay. I'm told that, that we're, our time is up. That is the end of the game. And the East is 180 and the West is 230. So the West has won the, the seventh computer bowl. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50. Please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles, 